Hi, I'm Jenya Rose from Rose Tax and Financial, and I'd like to walk you through the self-employed worksheet. Um, this worksheet is applicable to you if you get a 1099 miscellaneous, like if you, you know, drive Uber or you work for someone that pays you um, not by W-2, but by 1099 um, and doesn't withhold taxes for you. Um, anyone who's an LLC, a single person LLC. So um, if you do have a 1099 miscellaneous with something in box seven, then uh, this is the form you should be filling out. Or if you're just self-employed and you take, you know, you get money from clients and um, they pay you by check or whatever, credit card, you, if you do take credit card, you will be getting a 1099K from the credit card company and that, uh, that this worksheet applies to you as well. This basically is the worksheet for anyone who's not a W-2 or doesn't, uh, has income outside of their W-2 or is not a W-2 employee. So, um, so this is simple at the top business name, um, whatever you call your business or just your name, if you don't really have a name for it, um, type of business it is try to be specific because I have to pick a code that's going to match that the address. Um, that's where you're doing the work. Like if you have a home office, um, it's your address. Uh, did you begin the business this year? And if it's an LLC, I do do would like the EIN uh, number. That's the number you applied to the IRS for um, to your tax ID number for your business. Um, income. Uh, put your income here, not your W-2 income. Don't don't uh, don't put any W-2 income in here. I don't want you to get double taxed. Uh, just the income from this business. Um, and if you have multiple different businesses, but they could all fit into one category, they can all go on this worksheet together. If you're driving Uber and you're selling essential oils, they probably should go on two separate, um, separate worksheets and separate Schedule Cs. Um, any refunds you issued? Now this COG section right here, cost of goods sold, this only applies to you if you carry inventory. So, um, so skip this if you're just a service business. But if you do carry inventory, what, how much did you have um, on hand at the first day of the year? Um, that's just your wholesale value. Uh, how many purchases or, or how much did you spend that this year on, on inventory purchases? So you'll put your number in here. Uh, materials and supplies, if you spent any money on boxes uh, or you know any supplies that went into your product. Inventory purchases and materials and supplies are treated the same way, so I don't really care which one you put them in, just whatever's gonna help you you know, stay organized. Um, ending inventory, uh, that's how much you had on hand on the last day of the year. So, um, so business auto, um, if you have <clears throat> a, a home office, which I highly recommend, um, you can write off all of your mileage when you're going to, you know, do business. So let's say you leave home in the morning and your first leg is to Office Depot because you have to buy some supplies. If you did not have a home office, that first leg would not be deductible. Um, you would only deduct from Office Depot to your client's house and from your client's house to Staples. Let's say you needed more office supplies. Um, and then your last leg home at night would not be deductible either. If you have a home office, uh, even if it's just a little section of your house that you use exclusively for business, it could be a section of a room, doesn't have to be a whole room, um, then you can um, deduct all of, you know, that first leg is deductible suddenly and the last leg home is also deductible. So home office is on the second page, but um, anyway, the make and model of your auto, date you began using it for business, Business miles, how, how many business miles? Hopefully you're keeping track because I, you can't get the deduction if you don't keep track, so keep track. Uh, if you need to use an app, uh, MileIQ is fantastic. I have a coupon code for MileIQ, so drop me an email if you want it. Um, or I think I have it on the website somewhere, but I'll get it to you. Um, and then personal miles, I need to know those because um, we need to see the ratio or the IRS needs to see the ratio between your business miles and personal miles. So I do need your personal miles. If you don't keep track of those, just give me a round number, not too round. I don't like to see, you know, numbers like 5,000, you know, it doesn't, it looks like you weren't counting really. Um, how much interest did you pay on your um, car loan or truck loan this year? Um, 
we're no longer doing um, actual costs because no one uses it. Everyone fills it out every year and it's unusable because it's it has to do with the ratio of personal to business and it's never high enough to beat the mileage, the standard mileage rate. So if you're the one person, literally probably one client per year that may be able to use that deduction, you know, you can write them elsewhere and just tell me to run it. Uh, but I really, it's very unusable compared to the mileage, standard mileage rate. So um, business travel, airfare, lodging, um, meals while away from home, you're gonna get 50% of that um, because that's how it works. And uh, bus, train, taxi, this is all, you know, very self-explanatory, put how much you spend on advertising, um, commissions and fees you paid, like if you're, um, you sell on eBay, you'll have uh, commissions that you, that you paid, um, contract labor, this is if you hired anyone to do anything um, for your business. If you pay them over 600, you do need to 1099 them, um, which is really simple. You just go to efilemyforms.com and issue the person a 1099. Hopefully you have their social um, and uh, put it in box seven for non-employee compensation when you're filling out the 1099 at efilemyforms.com or ask me, obviously, I can tell you any of this again, you can drop me an email. Um, I'm just trying to get all the information in one place. Um, that is what, what common questions are asked. Uh, business insurance, if you carry E&O insurance on yourself or, or a, other type of liability insurance. Your health insurance, if you're not covered by a spouse's plan at work, uh, then you can write off your premiums. Um, so just the total premiums for the whole year. Um, mortgage interest, um, that's if you have like a business commercial building. Um, interest on your business credit cards. So that's a good one. Uh, finance charges, anything like that. Legal and professional services. Make sure you put in here what you spent on your tax preparation last year, including if you spent it with me. Uh, I mean, I usually remember to put it in, but I'd love it if you just put it in right there so that, so that, it's, um, so that we know that it's accounted for. Um, office expense, um, that's, you know, office supplies, any machinery or anything you rented, repairs, maintenance, supplies, this is all really simple and self-explanatory. Meals is what money you spent with the expectation of making money. So if you just took out, like, took your crew out to lunch, your crew being like your work crew, it doesn't really count. Um, utilities for a business property, that's if you have a commercial space. Um, how, just your total in utilities. Um, wages you pay to W-2 employee. Um, talk to me if you have an employee because there's some interesting fringe benefits that that you could uh, offer. Um, internet, how much you spend on internet, uh, how much you spend on training, conferences. Your cell phone bill for the year, give the total on this line and then on the next line, put the actual amount of business use. Um, like I used it for 50% for business or 70% for business, whatever, whatever you think is justifiable. We're on the second page, not far to go. Um, trade publications, subscriptions, posted shipping. This is all just really normal stuff. I can go, sort of skip through that. Here's your home office. Um, so note the total square feet that you used for business um, and the total square footage of your home. And then these are all your utilities, uh, money that you spent specifically on the office space. For renters, make sure you put in your rent total for the year and your renter's insurance. Uh, for homeowners, you got your mortgage interest, property taxes, insurance, um, and uh, money you spent on the entire home. Like if you fixed the roof, uh, you're gonna get a little shred of that. Let's say you're using 10% of your home, you're gonna get 10% of all these costs. So if you fix the roof, you'll get 10% of that uh, as a deduction. It's no longer deductible if it wipes out all of your self-employed income. It, it, you can't actually use it to take a loss, the home office, but, um, but you know, still useful. Um, depreciation, that this is only if you own the home and just read these instructions. It's not, it's not complicated. And this is this little section over here, large purchases. This is for anything you purchased over like $500 in, in that range so that we can depreciate it. Um, over the life of the asset instead of taking it all in one year, which is um, what you're supposed to do. But there's something called bonus depreciation where we can take it all in one year. So if you need it this year, if you made a lot of money this year, um, we'll definitely take it this year. And I'll probably have a conversation with you about that when you're uh, filling this out. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions um, about this form and um, 
Good luck filling it out. If you put something in the wrong place, everything on here is deductible at the same rate as, as, except for meals. Um, so just don't accidentally put it in the meal category. But if something's airfare and you put it in lodging, nobody cares. It's all, you know, it's all getting deducted at the same rate. Uh, the only one who may care is you if you have to look back at it later and try to figure out what you did. So, you know, make yourself some notes. Um, okay. Thanks so much. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.